Okay, Sleuther friends, this is our biggest interview ever. Today, we talk to Lisa Hamilton Daly. And here's what I want you to do. You are Sleuthers. I want you to really closely listen to what she says. She gives us answers without giving us answers. So read between the lines. I totally, totally encourage you all read between the lines. Here we go. This podcast was created by fans for fans and is not affiliated with or sponsored by Hallmark or the Hallmark Channel. Okay, this may be the biggest day of the podcast because we have the main person on the entire planet who knows the future of Hallmark Mysteries, Lisa Hamilton Daly. Hello, how are you doing today? I'm well, I'm so thrilled to be here. Good, I'm glad. And once again, to be the most important person on the planet as far as our podcast is concerned. So as I was starting to do my little investigation and figuring you know, out what to ask you, I looked at your LinkedIn because Lo and behold, we're connected on LinkedIn, which is absolutely fascinating. Thank you for that. But you have your PhD in English and American literature, which I am guessing a lot of your peers do not have a PhD. So I'm guessing at mid-20s, you are not thinking you're going to be, you know, this network giant that you are. Like, how did this all happen? Yeah, no, it's 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 funny. It's been an interesting road. Um, I wasn't, I didn't know for sure that I, I wanted to do this, but it's interesting. I spent a lot of time when I was in grad school going to the movies also. Um, we hadn't quite hit the golden age of television yet. You know, there was I watched TV a lot, but I, I really was actually spending a lot of time going to the movies. And so I I kind of went to like film school side by side with getting my PhD because I the I, I, where I went to school, there was this amazing theater called the Brattle Theater that showed everything. And I watched, you know, four hour Indian movies about about like cricket and, and you know, French movies and every movies from all over the world. So I got this really great kind of education um, in film. And, and then I became a big TV fan as well. So it, it made sense when I got back and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do rather than be a professor, I decided I wanted to go into film. And I did start in feature film. And then I moved into television. Did you have some moments where you thought maybe you wanted to be? Like, I went to a prep school and looking at your background, you're like literally the teacher, you know, that that background. So I did actually you did. You it's funny. I, I interviewed to teach. Um, I interviewed at colleges and I, I didn't, I don't know, it just, it wasn't, I loved teaching because I actually did teach for a minute. But I also interviewed to be a teacher at the school my daughter now attends, which is really funny. I interviewed there and I I was like one of the two finalists to be like the English teacher there. So, um, you know, but I think what unites all of this obviously is a love of story because, you know, and, and I also at some point decided that I wanted to switch from like sort of teaching to actually helping create the content, which we call now call content. But it, yeah, so I wanted to be on the creative side. And, um, and so I switched, I was here on a, I was in living in Los Angeles again on a postdoc, um, working on Oscar Wilde actually. And I, um, started interning for different film companies as a kind of an older person, which was interesting. So I started at the bottom again in film. It's actually interesting. Cause I was, as I told you, I was just talking to Nikki Deloche and Megan McNulty and Megan McNulty has a similar background she has her master's in teaching and she taught she tutored and she said at the end of the day it's all about telling stories and yeah. i've continued through that so okay so we're going to mostly talk about um mysteries but i do have to hit a little bit on some of the rom-com stuff because sure. there have been two movies that have just recently come out round and round over the holidays and then an american in austin and those movies were just completely other levels now I'll admit, I love all Hallmark movies. So the tried and true Hallmark, I still love all those. But I showed those movies to some of my friends. I said, you got to watch this, who aren't Hallmark fans and quite frankly, kind of don't like the Hallmark genre. Right. And it, they were both universally like, wow, these are great movies. So what is it like now? Is this like 
the direction we can expect a little bit more from Hallmark of this whole other level type movie? Look, I, I am I'm so proud of what the team did with these movies and, you know, with all of our movies this year. But those two are are definitely stands out standouts creatively. Um, and I think that we're always thinking about the range of an audience and who can we capture, you know, at different ends of it. Um, and so to that end, we're trying new things and we're trying things that are funnier or we're doing more period pieces. And I think with this, um, we decided to just say, like, I feel like these are like feature film, like you go see them in a in a movie theater and be totally content and, and think I, I my $25 or whatever a movie ticket costs in your area was well spent here. And I think um, I want to have some of those in our docket because I think that it helps us bring in some new audience members like your friends who are saying, you know, wouldn't watch a Hallmark movie. I think that all Hallmark movies at their core are about love and connection. And I think those movies are also about that. They just take a slightly, you know, more feature type way in. Um, we're going to. I don't think that they they don't signal a mandate of change across our whole portfolio, but they definitely are something that we want to keep doing, keep making films that feel a little more like a feature movie that you might see, you know, and, and as we continue to, to move across and expand across more platforms, I think that'll be helpful for us to draw in new people with content like that. I will admit I have watched round and round eight times and that is a record. I, I literally, I'm in the time war, right there that I just can't get enough of that movie. Summer Villa, I, which is old school, is the only other one I've seen that many times. I thought Round and Round was was really, I mean, just adorable in every way. And I, I'm I'm so glad you were a fan. And look, I, I saw American in Austin and, and like the, that's where the, in, the English professor in me was just like, this is amazing. I love it. We, you know, our whole Austin stunt this year was fantastic. I thought that we really brought it. And I think we did something a little different in each movie, you know, and I think that that's what made it the whole stunt so special and unique. You know, we had the incredible costumes and and just everything else about our, our sense and sensibility with our, you know, with an African-American cast and everything like that and then you know d diving into the world of like a in english of a, of a conference of like a romance novel conference and just the fun of of Al seeing ali sweeney talk to jane austen so i i just i thought we did i thought the whole thing was amazing but i agree that american in austin was secretly probably my favorite plot wise just because it i love i love a little time travel as you must know from seeing the other things we've done so i'm right there with you right there with you so now you've been at Hallmark for a couple of years now, right? So what is your thing that you have been the most proud of the accomplishment? Because it's changed considerably since I'll just use COVID as a breaking point. But if you just look at it, you know, in the 2020s, it's very, very different. There's still this a lot of the same, but it's very different. So what what's the thing? I mean, that makes you I think proud? I'm proud of the thing that you're pointing out, which is that I think we're making a wider range of of con of of shows. I think that we are um our stuff looks is starting to look a little more sophisticated. We have we're working, we're partnering with amazing like writers and cinematographers and um, you know actors and directors. Like I think we just expanded the pool of talent that we're working with, and I and I think our you know our scripts are getting better. And when your script gets better the director that you attract gets better. And when the director you attract gets better, the actor you attract gets better. So it's like incremental. It's all built on the basis of, of you know, having a great concept and a great script. And I think that's what's happening is we're, we're kind of letting our writers first and foremost, like run free and use their imagination and think about more things. And I've also let our team, like, what is the, what's the thing you've always wanted to make? Like what the team has been so great about is like following their own passions and like finding writers to partner with that make exciting new kinds of stories. Because I think that, you know, at some point our basic story, which is beloved and we'll never move away from having a handful of like, you know, girl goes back to like save the Christmas tree festival. We're going to tell a variation of that because I think there's something very satisfying about that. But I think that also finding new kinds of stories to tell and diversifying the stories you're telling as well as the types of actors you're using and just everything else, like just more diversity on every single level and more and more quality, like filmmaking and art, bringing all that in. That's what I'm proud of is that we are leveling ourselves up, even when we have a really fun, traditional, straight down the middle story. I think those are even better now. I think that I think we've just found better ways to sort of do it. And it's really out of necessity because, look, we have made Hallmark has been so successful over the last 10 years or so at, you know, making these 
having a huge fan base, really pleasing that fan base, but you kind of run out of, you know, run out of things. <laughs> you got to find new ways to do it. And I think as we, we started also to produce so many more movies, you really have to tell to differentiate between 40 movies at Christmas, you actually need to get more unique. And so what I love that we're doing too, is that each, everything we do is becoming more unique in its own way. You know, if we have a movie about faith, it's getting more deeper into that faith. If we have a movie say about the LGBTQ community, I really want us to have something that feels more realistic. That's built around it. You know, that's built that the community feels like something you'd really find. So it's like, it's really diving into those places and finding stuff that just feels more unique, more special, more different, and really true to the story they're telling. So that's what I'm excited about. That's awesome. So I imagine you see pretty much every movie before the rest of us see this. Have you had one that you've looked at and just were like, wow, I know this is going to nail it. That may have been a shock to everyone. And maybe it's one of the ones we just talked about, right? But just one where you're like, oh, this is good. I mean, this is good. Ha I have to say that the movie that I could not stop watching and then every time it came on television like i'd be like you know i flip on our air sometimes to see what's happening today um was a built more christmas last year um every single time that movie got to the end i was crying when like chris palaha comes to the future i i just i thought that that movie was really um it was a whole new level of quality for us in terms of production value and just sort of like what it brought to the table in terms of our Christmas movies. Um, and I loved it. And and from the first, I went on set, saw a little bit of it being filmed. And when I saw the first cut, I just, I was in love with it. So um, I, I was really excited with how well that turned out. All right. My only question of that is how does he survive without a social security card in 2024? Take over the, the social security <laughs> part of a dead person. Like everyone oh, does. So that's where we're at now on Hallmark. Yes, that's awesome. where <laughs> Love it. All right. All right. So we kind of talked a little bit about this before we started recording, but Hallmark is a business. It's not a nonprofit organization. As much as us fans would love to believe that the sole purpose of the network is just to make us entertainment. We understand at the end of the day, it is a business. You have to have your business goals. You have to make money to keep producing the um, movies. So with mysteries, like when you look at it, they have a significantly smaller audience than um, the rom-com does. So what is it really that goes into this decision when you see something to say, hey, let's go make this movie? What are the business decisions kind of behind that for a mystery? Well, obviously we do look at the numbers, but I am, I'm a big instinct person <laughs> and I had as I kind of commissioned a study from our, with our research team to look at how mysteries worked historically. And what we found out is that the first episode of a mystery was always a little softer, that it took a minute for fans to figure out, to come to a mystery. And I think they needed to know the promise that there might be some more of them, you know? And so it took about two or three to really get to the place where stuff sort of achieved liftoff. And I think that, um, you know, we've seen some weakness in some of our first episodes and I'm like, no, let's stay with it because we've seen that it, you know, it can get better. And so it's really about like what feels like it's really fresh and new and different and, and can really grab some more eyeballs and who has our fan favorites in it that we know can, you know, stick around for eight more episodes. So it's, it's a combination of a lot of things. And I think we've tried a lot of stuff over the last two years with our mysteries. When I got here, we had sort of paused um, the production of mysteries because I think they felt that they were mostly skewing a little bit older and um, as audience wise, and they had sort of people, we transitioned ourselves a little bit more into um, romantic dramas. And I, I don't know, I looked at that and I thought, no, mysteries are so fun. And they, I felt that they were a big differentiator for us. I did not think that there was any place else that I could see that was doing, except for like British people. And, you know, people have BritBox and Acorn and things like that, and they can go there. But like, there was no one, no um, US companies or networks or anything that were really leaning into mysteries. And I thought this feels unique for us. You know, it just, it feels like it's different enough from our main channel. It's fun. I love that you can just, you know, have a wheel now with like 10 and just plow through them. It seemed like a great 
seemed like a great, especially in a bingeable world, seemed like a great alternative to series. It felt like unique. So I'm saying a lot of this. I'm, I'm saying the same thing over and over again. But basically, I felt like this felt unique for us. So I thought we need to do more in news. So and the team took the challenge and I think has produced some new stuff. And we have we have not ruled out bringing back you know, some of our older things and also doing more of our new things. I think we're just testing and learning and trying and seeing what works. And, you know, we have some fun surprises for people coming up. So, you know, I'm not going to say more, but, um, you know, we, we hear the fans. I, they email me, they send me letters, you know, about some of the older ones. And some of that, some of that is delayed. Hint, hint, science healed and delivered people by logistics. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's not on us. It's literally on the people that produce the shows. We are often at the mercy of other people, like in bringing something back. Our actors leave, they want to do something different. Our writers are busy. So we're sort of working through trying to get around some of that stuff and sort of see what can we do. And I think we're excited to, um, you know, to, to, to lean into what our fans like, but also try to introduce new stuff. Cause we know if we introduce a couple of new episodes, they're probably going to fall in love with that too. So we're hoping, you know, that as we do more, if we do another Gilded Mysteries or we do more of, um, you know, the, the, um, uh, I just, I love the cases of mystery lane, which we're doing another one of, I thought that, I just thought that was fun. It reminded me like a tiny bit of like a moonlighting or just something different with Hold a couple of little, you know, had a little sparring going on. And, and so I think it's, it's, um, it's bringing people new stuff that they're going to love while also balancing it with the older stuff that we know they, we know they love. So. Well, your answer couldn't have been better because my next one was going to be that one of our big platforms we stand on is that every mystery needs three episodes just for exactly what you said, because that first one is a little clunky. In fact, I I told you, I just talked to Nikki um, and we're talking about the first Curious Cater where I kind of liked it. But it was that second one when I really got to know those characters when I was like, oh, this is good. And then by the third one, you just have that development. So that is what I said. That's I don't have a question. I just have a mandate three, three episodes. No, we, and look, it, it it makes sense for us to do that, too, because it's the standalone. The, the things that are standalones, you know, don't repeat. It, it's better to have like three or four or five or more because you can run them as a little, you know, as a little stunt or whatever. And you, just right. the ones that are alone, you don't get to have the fun. Of, you know, these are built around interesting characters, really. And you don't have the fun of seeing those characters develop. And so I think I feel the same way that these have to be multi- multiples. And I do feel your, uh, not your pain, but the the Science Seal delivered folks, we get a lot of messages, our DMs, and people think seem to think we have a direct line to you, which now we do, which is great. <laughs> But they'll say, you know, when are we getting the science seal deliver? You know, they they said it's coming. What's going on? And so what I've been just saying is, what would Oliver say? Patience is a virtue. It's coming. This Now, this is me. This is not you. But I'm saying, just be patient. Let them go. They, you know, you've given us enough information. So, yeah, I there's just you. a lot. There's realities of the world right. you know, that we have to contend with. So, and, uh, and, as, and as fans, we don't. Right? Yeah. Everything is just magical. Like. Just touch it and it can happen. Only it was that easy to do production. Yes. Actor schedules, all those writers things. That doesn't matter, right? It's just give me that my mystery. Give it to me next week. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things with mysteries is a lot of these tend to be based off cozy uh, novels that already exist. Um, We had Alyssa Maxwell on and she was telling the story about how one of the Hallmark executives just happened to be doing a tour of a Newport mansion, picked up the novel and said, oh, hey, this may work. And years later, it literally took years when we're just, you know, we're talking patience here. But what is it that like, how do you guys go about finding this? Is it it, where you are out there having someone who reads a whole bunch of cozy novels or. I mean, it can happen in so many different ways and it it happens very much the same way that any movie production happens, which either, yes, it's serendipity. You're, you pick up a novel, you happen to be a person who is able to make it happen. And great. A lot of times our, our partners who are producers um, come in with the, the concepts on pitch us and, and they're really sort of producers are meant to really be, 
the engine of idea generation. So they're often the ones out looking for books, out looking for concepts, looking at, you know, podcasts, articles, whatever, across the spectrum, finding different things or have having a writer who's come up with a great idea in their head. So there's all that, which is a fully spec idea. So there's, there's lots of different ways and we're open to all of them. Like we really do kind of like try to, you know, especially when you're looking for something new, sometimes we're, you know, thinking, wow, that really worked. You know, that concept really worked for, only murders in the building or whatever. Like, what can we do that feels a little bit like that, but it's Hallmark's version, you know, and, and um, Knives Out, you know, we had a kind of Knives Out-ish um, mystery, the, uh, the one on the the island, which I just spaced on the name of. Um, Mystery Island. Mystery Island. Thank you. Like yes. that was the, the obvious name, right? Which I loved. I thought it was super beautiful shot in Panama, very atmospheric. Like I really want to do more of those because I thought it was just, and it felt sophisticated and like, I, it's so I just think, you know, it's fun when we're sort of, you know, riffing on something that's in the culture, whatever. So we're doing it all different ways. Well, we couldn't agree more. We actually, the podcast we dropped today is on our favorite sidekicks. And one of mine was from Mystery Island, which is Baroness Janie, but it's the same thing. And um, uh, John Christian Plummer has been a great uh, friend of ours. And I was talking to him. I'm like, you have to do more because we need more Baroness Janie. I I am so. a, I I feel the same way about Mystery Island. Um, I just loved it. Like it was it was very much my jam. Like I think that everyone has their own kind of mystery they like, right. and that one for me because it, it felt like a little bit. I made um back when I was at at A and E Lifetime, we made with that we partnered with the BBC and we made a really cool version of And Then There Were None, the Agatha Christie novel. And I think it was like six parts or something like that. And it was their Boxing Day um, miniseries. And it was so fun. And I loved working on it. And Mystery Island was reminding me if like Knives Out and Agatha Christie had a baby, right. it was Mystery Island. So, um, you know, that was my my secret favorite one. I love it. love it. So the other thing that's interesting though, and maybe this is more, I guess, the producer's, is one of the things I've started doing is reading the book to see kind of how the book's a little different. So, you know, the the Hannah Swenson's, but The Curious Cater is one that really sticks out to me because if you read the book, that is not Hallmark. I mean, there is abuse there. It's crazy. So I'm just curious, like, and maybe once again, this is a better question for producers who we are talking to Mike Barbodo tomorrow, who, um, maybe they're there but like how you can read a cozy mystery like that and go huh this seems hallmarky when you read the book and it is i think dark that, characters yes i think that what producers are able to do is figure out the kernel of the idea that works for us and then kind of adjust accordingly i think that's you know we have that a lot where especially when people bring us pitches that have been someplace else or scripts that were set up somewhere else and now we're looking at them and we just have conversations about what works for us and what doesn't, you know, we're very much a G light PG place. And so, you know, you can't have a lot of the things that you can have other places and, you know, you strip those out basically, you know, you take out that stuff and it's, we're used to doing that a lot because I think it's, you know, some of the books, the, some of the source material we would look at is not entirely Hallmark, but especially for the mysteries, you know, our, the cozy mystery genre is not quite as focused on sort of a, a you know the 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 love the, the enveloping love because you know someone's dead usually at the beginning right. of these so something bad has happened so you're already in a little bit of a different place but you're not gonna there's not gonna be a lot of blood there's not gonna be a lot of abuse there's not gonna be a lot of weirdness like it's just it's a world where things and also it's the fantasy of crime where it's like everything is right at the end and so for that to me that fulfills that hallmark promise that everything's gonna be okay it's just a little darker to get there in our mysteries so but again it can't be that dark. Okay. Well, we are one of our big claim to fame. We're the only podcast that focus solely on mysteries. And so March 6th for us was a fantastic, great day with the whole rebranding of the network. So can you tell us now, I then go look at the whole schedule and it didn't look that different, right? Which so... I imagine there's a bigger vision and there's changes and all this content's coming. Can you just share a little bit about what do we have as sleuthers to expect? Sure. I think, look, I think our, um, you know, our daytime stuff will continue to be sort of mystery and, and, you know, light crime focused daytime day part, you know, that daytime part. 
And then um, our original mysteries, which we are ramping up the number of, uh, you know, as we have been over that will be the, um, you know, our evenings and premieres. Um, we may do more with types of shows coming forward. I can't say much more about that because it's still a work in progress, you know, maybe limited series. Like we're just thinking about how we can bring more to it. But I think for us, I always thought that homework movie and mystery was a weird name. <laughs> I was like, why, why? Cause it just, it doesn't make sense. They're like two different categories, like movies and mysteries are not the same category of things. Like one is a, anyway, you know what I mean? So I thought, well, we should just make it simpler and also a little more declarative about our intent, because I think, again, this is what makes us distinct and what makes us stand out. And also I did see so much online about what our viewers wanted, which was more mysteries. They wanted them back. And so I think this is just, you know, we brought them back and now we have sort of dedicated the channel to them. So, um, you know, that's, and, and so, yes, there is going to continue to be sort of an evolution around like, what can we do here? And we're thinking about that. So it's funny you said, because people are always complaining like um, to us saying, oh, Hallmark's not committed to mysteries anymore. And then I just went through and I just did a drop back on the, on the one comment. And I was like, do you realize they've done 14 <laughs> brand new, not talking about the continuations, but 14 brand new mysteries essentially in the last two and a half years? I'm like, I think that's a pretty big commitment. It feels so, big to me. The money yeah, in yeah. it. <laughs> I'm putting we're putting our money where our mouth is here. Um, look, and I think, you know, we we need to start to focus in on on building some of those into wheels. I think we just right. were actually I think we had so many fun ones. We're just like, let's do this and see what happens. So um, you know, I think I, I think that uh and I know that people are, you know, worried about we're never gonna bring back some of the old ones. Some of them we can't because the actors are no longer, you know available to us for whatever reason, but we're always thinking about what we could do. Well, I will say right now, Gourmet Detective would be my, put that on my wish list. That's my favorite mystery of all time. But going back to some of the old mysteries, well, this, there's ones like Jane Doe, Murder 101, Mystery Woman that, you know, going way, way back to the early 2000s, like, are these going to, because they don't really air ever. Probably not. Um, If they okay. really, if they're 20 years old, I, I don't know how we go back to them. The actors are probably much different. Oh, no, not making new ones, but making new air, airing. They, yeah, Aaron, um, they don't really ever air. I was like, yeah, we're not reviving <laughs> <laughs> those. Um, I don't know. That's interesting. I, I should talk to my, I should, it, it's probably like every time something's not on the air, it's not on the air for a reason because it probably stopped rating, honestly. Like, it, so it's, it, you know, our, our team is super clever and super strategic about what they do with why, why something, why you're seeing something, right? And you're seeing it because it's proven, it's a proven winner, it holds up and repeats. Like, so anything that's been kind of phased out, it usually means that it just kind of, people lost interest after a while. Okay, fair enough. Um, with the commitment with, of the network, and it does seem so just looking at the first four months because you just announced the new Hannah Swenson and the new Curious Cater coming in April, can we pretty much expect maybe a higher frequency now of new releases, whether it be a part of a wheel or or a new one? Pretty much at the at the cadence we're going to be at for a minute. I don't think that I don't right now. There's no plans to increase the frequency a huge amount. No, we're pretty much at that. Yeah, well, that's been like two a, two a month, which is yeah. fantastic considering it used to be you know one month or you know there. So that's. I'm not complaining. I am very, very excited with 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 that. Um, do you have any ratio as far as like a new one? Like let's try to do a wheel and for every one new one and we'll do two two wheels, or is it just whatever sort of hits the dust that looks good? I mean, we're I that. mean, they're all they're all theoretically could become wheels. So, um, you know, I think there are a lot of them are trial balloons, in, you know, the for, in the first one to see how we feel about them. And, and but um, I don't think there's like a there's no set ratio. It's really, again, especially after the strike, it's been about ability and availability to do to make some stuff. So. All right. So one of the things that um, I've watched a few of and they're a little bit older are the true one off mystery movie where it's 
like a lot of the the current ones, even if it only aired once because for whatever reason decided, oh, we're not going to pick it up. They always seem to end with the hope that there could be more. Right. But Hallmark used to make ones that really were just a self-contained. No, this is just a kind of like the rom-com, right? Yeah. You have a beginning, you have a conclusion, you don't have an expectation of more. Is that something you guys are looking at doing, making more I don't of those? Think we, no, I don't know that we have anything in the pipeline like that right now. I think that if anything, we're probably looking at different ways to stack stuff, but I don't think we're we're not actively developing totally closed-ended things at the moment. So, All right. So we, we kind of touched on a little bit earlier. As fans, we don't have to deal with all of your you know, business logistics and all of those sort of things. But we have some like good ideas as fans is like, is there a possibility of crossovers or is it because of production companies and things like that? They just, in our world, they work, but in the real world of programming, they just don't work because it gets, uh, you know, out of a Hallmark budget and it's just too crazy to do things like that. Cause it'd be great to see like Travis Burke show up on curious caterer or something like that. And you know, that'd I be mean, fun. look, I, I don't want to say anything because these are supposed to be surprises, but oh. um, look, I think we, we love how the cameos operate for us because right. I think the fun little Easter egg, the fans love it. Um, You know, and it's, it, it, it gives us a lot of like, you know, noise on social. A lot of times, I'll just be honest, it's because like someone's in town. <laughs> they're there, they're filming something else. And I mean, if it, if it feels good, like then we pull them over. And it's it's often opportunistic in that way. I'm just I'm just showing you how the sausage is made here a little bit. Sometimes it's deliberate, but for a lot of times it's like we have a lot of people shooting stuff in the same town, and we're like, and their their pals or you know some of them are more deliberate. You know, with, with, when it's like Tyler showing up in Andrew's movie or whatever, like those are right. those are a little crafted or Paul showing up. But but yeah, I mean they're really fun, and and we're constantly thinking of ways to do more of them. So it's. You know, it is just a, it is a bit of a budget thing because you really it's hard to like fly someone all the way in for it. So it's it's opportunistic a lot of the time. One of the, as I said before, we did our little podcast on uh, the sidekicks, but the, um, the 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 one that just crime time that just aired had a fantastic character we loved, which was Brittany Mitchell's character of the M.E. And as we're watching it, both my co-hosts and I were like afterwards saying, it would be great to see a spinoff with this one character. And that's something, once again, a lot of the, you know, CBS, you look at, you know, they've got Chicago medical hospital PD, like everything they'll spin off everything. Do you think that's something that um, maybe Hallmark can do is like take one of these. Potentially, fun characters? Yeah. I don't see, I feel like it's, um, you know, certainly a possibility. Um, I think as we try to, my feeling at the moment is we need to focus on building wheels out of all the things we have. But look, if you'd like to pr come in and pitch us a spinoff with a medical examiner, <laughs> happy to consider it because it's a great idea. I love a medical examiner character. Quincy was one of those right. that I watched endlessly as a child because I was always like, what new gross thing is going to happen, you know, this week. So um, but I think, yeah, it's a fun idea. And we're always open to those kinds of ideas. That's awesome. All right. Well, I have to get. uh First of all, I have to figure out how to do a pitch, but then I'll be coming yeah. at you with Come my on uh, my, my <laughs> one. Once once I know how to do it, I will do it. Um, so another thing that Hallmark's been really successful for, uh, you know, we have The Way Home going into the second season. There was Cedar Cove, Chesapeake Shores, Good Witch doing the series. Do you think that is that something where you guys are looking at is creating an actual like ongoing, not necessarily a wheel, but more of a series? where it's on every week for, you know, 10 episodes kind of thing, or am I yeah. running it there too? Yeah, no, I, I think, yeah, we're definitely thinking about that. That's sort of one of the, the, the things we're looking forward to, to see like, how can we diversify the type of programming we're doing? And that's definitely one of the things we've talked about and are thinking about. All right. So not asking you to open up the books or anything like that, but I assume the financial commitment of doing like a 10 week, hour long show is significantly more than cranking out one of the two hour movies. Oh, so significantly, it's, yes. yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's obviously very big discussion versus ones of millions. So yeah, it's different. Okay. 
So one of the things we saw recently is Dylan Neal was off in uh, Rome and he posted this great idea he had of doing basically an unscripted, his gourmet detective cruising around. So is the possibility of unscripted? Like I know we have Lacey, her, yeah. she has her unscripted we have, coming. We but... have Lacey and we're, you know, we're definitely developing some more ideas. Um, and I think, I, and our ideas are, created around a lot of times around all our Hallmark talent. They're created by or built around our Hallmark talent. So yeah, we're we're actually pretty actively looking for fun concepts that are, you know, it, that's actually a fun idea. Um gourmet detective traveling Europe would be cool. Um but uh yeah. So the, the answer is yes. Um we're working on that kind of stuff. Okay. So would, would the, is the like the Lacey one, where is that going to air? Is that on Hallmark or is that on Hallmark Now or? It's going to be on Hallmark Now. Hallmark Now. Okay. Um, are you, are you have plans to, because right that now. That may be one of those details that I'm not supposed to tell you, but Megan oh. will tell you that in a follow up. <laughs> Um, okay. I know we announced it. I don't know if we said where it was going to be. So, okay. um, but yeah, I think um, we're definitely there's about 10 episodes of that and it's going to come later this year. You mentioned uh, Tyler a little earlier. We had a great idea for him and that's a three part um, little mini series with him where we called it Orca Island, where he, it starts out in the first episode, they're all just nice. And by the third one, you find out that Tyler is the bad guy and he's the killer even though he's like the cop who's trying to help and doing all that the twist and turn so there you go there's my idea you can use that and make it your little three-part mini series orcas involved because that's, that's really what i want to hear about i well, thought, no, I thought like, it's just orca was, island because it's off up off vancouver so i was hoping like orcas were part of the plot but okay well, you, you could you could bring uh renona could fish talk, need to back to in you yeah need, yeah, like, yeah. You know. Sorry. He'll be like ride, riding them like Shamu kind of thing yeah. there. So yeah, Shamu uh, murder mystery there. It's amazing. One of the things that's also going on, it's just the reality of it, is a lot of our favorite Hallmark stars who we've been liking for years and years and years are getting older. That's just what happens to people, right? And so maybe the romantic-y type story isn't quite the same or, you know, kind of whatever, who wants to see someone like my, me at this point, find love for the first time. But other ones that have been really popular have been, um, you know, the murder she wrote, you're talking about Quincy being older. There's a book out of Tuesday murder club, who is a, some senior citizens doing oh my that. God, I tried to get that book. I, I love the idea. DreamWorks is doing it. Oh, uh, really? DreamWorks. Uh, Amblin, you know. Yeah. But like that sort of mystery where there's just really no even hint at romance. It's really just focusing on the character. Is that something you think Hallmark would ever do? Or do you always want to yeah, have? I, I think, you know, day? I think um, across the board, we're trying, you know, I think our staple obviously is the, you know, meet cute, have a romance, like right. have a kiss, you know, whatever. Um, I think that as we start to diversify the stories we're telling, I think we'll start telling things in different ways. Um, I think it's definitely true that there doesn't always have to be a romance. We do find that romance is a good anchor for us a lot of times and that there's a lot of interest in that. So we don't want to discount the importance of it. But I think, you know, in I, um, you know, I think that in in all of them, there's a possibility that we could move past that paradigm sometimes. And in I, in, in cases of Mystery Lane, um, Paul and Amy, they start out married. So you're not even as no right. meet cute. But so you're in the middle of their marriage with them, which I think is different for us. I mean, you know, a lot, very few things we start out and the people are already married. A couple of them in the room. It's like a heart to heart, right? Yeah. One of the classic uh, mist or little sort of yeah. super type shows. But so. I think, I think it's just, um, I think it's really important. To, like we are thinking about love in different ways, you know, friendly, sisterly, familiar, like familial, all kinds of like, you know, so I think that as we start to like, move through these mysteries a little more i think we might get more stories like that so oh, that'd be absolutely fantastic but we are going to go backwards just a little bit we have a couple and i don't know if you can share anything but cut color uh murder which was left on a cliffhanger nikki and nora which has hunter king and renona fish who everyone loved that one francesca quinn 
Do you have any update you can share with I, us on I those? Don't. Like, should, Just, should we be I feel hopeful? like I've given a lot of, not to be too thematic, but a lot of clues about the fact that we really are thinking about all of these as wheels. So you take okay. that to mean whatever you want. Um, again, it is a matter, it's a matter sometimes of availability and time and scheduling. There's a lot of reasons why things appear or don't appear. That, okay. That not really I, will, I will, I will be optimistic then. So you live did not hope. say, you did not say no. I did not say no. You can live in hope. As, uh, as w w in, uh, dumb and dumber, you know, one in a million, you're saying there's a chance. Perfect. All right. All right. So one of the things Hallmark's obviously known for, and a lot of people who only watch Hallmark will watch it in November, December for the holidays. Could we expect a holiday mystery, perhaps? Well, we just did one, which I a thought real was a real mystery, though. Mister. Well, mystery on Mistletoe Lane. It was a mystery. It was sort of like, you know, they didn't, had to follow the clues. You didn't have a dead person. You want a dead person. Well, it's yeah, yeah. probably not going to have a fully dead person at Christmas, but I, you know, never say never. Maybe Santa Claus dies. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> well, but, that's uh, a whole. You'll get on the. You'll get some press for that one. I think. I, I think at Christmas it'll continue to be very late mystery. Um, I don't think it'll be murder, but I, you know, I, I never say never. But um, yeah, I, I, uh, there, there are things in the pipeline. So we'll I did. See. I did enjoy that one, and you had Santa Stakeout, which kind of had a little bit Santa of Santa Stakeout was fun. Of, of that um, as the one well, so. um, catching Mr. Claus or whatever right. that. Was not even on. Uh, was it Finding Mr. Or whatever that was the name of it this year was on HC. But yeah, we had some like little crimey, little more mysterious ones. Um, I love. By the way, that was another one catching clock. Yeah, catching clock. Why am I going brain dead on? Now we're both that? having the moment. But, but yes. that was also yes, absolutely a fantastic movie. Um, yeah, so well written, and Luke McFarlane. Anyone who. All this, all the people who are the haters who say, "Oh, he can't generate uh, passion um, with a woman." Just watch, watch the kiss in that movie, and that is put to bed because that was the hottest kiss in Hallmark history in that movie. Yeah, I think they let that one go a little longer than normal, but there was a reason because it was, you know, so, good and fantastic, great movie, but just so well written too. Yeah, I was really proud of that one. All right. So final question is, and we've, we've talked about a lot and you've given us a lot of the little hints, but just in a real nutshell, what, because with um, Hallmark Mysteries, one of the things that's a little different than the, the rom-com audience is they get their movie, it's finished, it goes on. With the mysteries, they just develop such a higher level of passion for those characters. And you know, we've talked about some canceled ones where people refuse to move forward from that or, you know, they just really, really are in it. And now they're very skeptical and they feel like, oh, Hallmark's just going to crush our heart again. So right. what can you tell us that's going to get us all the sleuthers out there and to say, and now I think launching the station, you know, the channel just inherently says a lot, but what can you just tell us to say, nope, sleuthers, we got you. I mean, we really are focused on bringing mystery content to them. And to the extent that we can continue wheels, to the extent that we can lean into what's working, we're doing it. Again, some of this stuff, not in our control, but where we can, and when we find something that works, we are like dog with a bone. We'll keep making them. So I think that's the thing is like, you know, they and if they watch them, we'll make them. So, you know, if so, let so turn on your TVs and watch them. Yeah. And then we'll be like, they like it. So we'll make more. But look, I, I think we're really excited for the upcoming year and for some of the new mysteries and for some of the returning ones that are fun. Um, you know, just just put some other some some fan favorites through the pipeline the other day. So just stand by because stuff's coming your way. So and we have a mystery 101 uh, marathon coming up, I think, this weekend, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. So you can still get your, you know, your share of uh, Amy and Travis there. So. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for taking some time talking with us. Um, I think mm -hmm. you really gave us Luther's a lot of hope. And um, I'm really excited for the upcoming year because I'm reading between a lot of lines with tons of optimism. Excellent. All right, thank so, you. So glad you're a fan. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks.